welcome to Phoenix TV, the TV show that follows Manchester's fastest and most exciting sports team and championship winning team, the Manchester Phoenix. On this week's show, apart from showing you the trophy presentation, we have match highlights and player interviews, but we're going to start with the hockey news. Apart from the only news we need really is we're champions, but we're going to bring Tambo in anyway. So how's it going, mate? You all right? Are we champions? I think so. I read it somewhere. Right, well, we must be. So. Before we start with all this garbage here tonight, big shout out to the Telford fans over in the corner. Hi, Telford. And they're not even watching. And they're not even watching. Oh. So that's it. Sort well, of. Hopefully they'll watch this on TV. and yeah, I'm going to tell Wayne Scholes on them. <laughs> Right, well, there's no signings, there's no rumours, because we're all going on our summer holidays, but we've got a week longer to wait than Peterborough and Slough have. Well, there is that, yeah, and it's, I think it's one of those where I think the Phoenix fans are quite happy they don't have to delay any kind of holidays for a week or so, aren't they? I'll go on to Peterborough in a few minutes, but on to the news. Midweek game, Steel Dogs 4, the Wildcats 5. Steel Dog goes corner and got a hat-trick, catching up on uh, Michael Sonny, and Lloyd Gibson got their other. Yes, Jonas Hoog got the winner for them with a very late goal. Two for Sam Lake, Ryan Watt and Sam Bullers got their goals. On to Saturday, Telford three, Flames four, in what has turned out to be a rehearsal for the quarterfinals of the playoffs. Joe Miller, Scott McKenzie and Timo Kulavainen, all ex-Phoenix players, I might add. Yeah, so, I mean, that's what he's spending his money on, our players. Well, pretty much Tony Hand, the scouting department for the EPL, it seems, for certain teams, but... You know. I bet you Tony's taking a back hander from Wayne, from Wayne's goals. I bet that's what that means. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only kidding, coach, honest. Right, Tom Duggan, Martin Opatowski, Christofferson, and the winner with four minutes left from that D man, Branislav Kometa. Wildcats three, Bison one. The bandwagon's rolling along for Swindon. They're playing really well at the moment. They're going into the playoffs. Goals from Godfrey, Nell, and Ryan Watt. Stuart Mogg got his first professional goal for Bainingstoke. Steelbox seven, the Jets three. Slough with 11 out skaters. The goals from a Tverdak double, one from Stephen Bammer, and Steel Dog goals Cornell with another two. Lee Haywood, Ashley Calvert, Andrew Hurst, Cameron Brownlee, and Edgar Babris. Right, that's enough with that one. Milton Keynes three, back no B's four. A bit of controversy on this one, Pete. No idea of the goal scorers because they haven't bothered putting the score sheet on yet. But uh, the winner for the B's apparently shouldn't have been allowed. In overtime, they had three imports on the ice. That's not that's And not they allowed, should have had three bits. No, I, I mean, the urban myth, and again, it's a myth that's all I've got, <laughs> is that they knew about it and decided not to do anything about it, which uh, we'll leave that to somebody else to decide. Uh, yeah, it's very best know. if we move quickly on. Yeah, but it's a good one. story, though. <laughs> it's a good story. That brings us on to the league table. After talking about Phantoms 2, Phoenix 3. Great win for them last night. Worked really hard all night. The highlight, if they shot on Peterborough TV, is Michael Sonny's shot hander. Just wonderful goal. Yeah, well, I mean, the guy knows how to put the puck in the net, and it doesn't matter whether your power play, even strength, short handed. As you look at the the stats he's put up this season, even last season, you don't want to give him the puck in uh, and let him get in the offensive zone. Right, on to the league table. Phoenix are top. We're going to stay top because we're champions. We've got 78 points, we could make it 80 tonight. Bison second with 72, Flames 69, Lightning 64, Wildcats 58, the Tigers 56, Steel Dogs 48, Bees 46, Phantoms 43, and Slough 37. Right, that's it. Let's go watch some hockey for the last regular game of the season. In by Backlick, back hands towards the corner. Maynard under pressure from McKinney. Backlick to Kovar down in the corner. Kovar's pass is looking for Sniffy Cruz because he tried to play it out in front. Good hustle by McKinney to get there ahead of Kula Vinen. Kovar, nice pass, Graham towards the net. Save made by Ryan Luce. Looks there, McKinney trying to sweep it in round with a pass save down here to the corner. Kula Vinen to the line, kept in through for it. McKinney, top of the circle, deflected, and Ryan gets a piece of it from the new champions as Kovar backhands it to Bakalik and chips down the wing McKinney into the zone will drive towards the goal puck comes out from good save Kovar trying to put it in 1-2 wax at it Ryan down on the ice the puck did not go Hard off the ball is picked up by Bakalik Bakalik into the circle sweeps it across Kovar in slot just up over the crossbar Bakalik gets onto it down in the corner drops it off for Robert Schnabel who wander down into the corner nicely Kicks it through, then gives it to Robin Kovar. It's Ben Wood, top of the circle, shot reflects off a stick all the way around Schnabel. He'll pick it up down in the corner. 
backhands it through to Robin Kova. Kova, Schnabel from the line. Big shot, pass saved, Declan Ryan, and there is no reaper. High pass down, though, and he's forced to retreat back into the Phoenix zone. Risky pass gives it away. Shot from Davis, and he scores. Well, Ben Wood knows he has done wrong. It was a terrible pass. Wide open in the slot for Stan Davis, and he goes high. Glove side on Steve Foam to put the Tigers on the board first. It's Phoenix nil, Telford one. Super it's Kova. He opens away with it, gets it to back on his left hand side. Into the zone. Cuts inside. Nice backhand through his leg shot from the end. Save made by Ryan. Loose pop was there. The Phoenix couldn't get onto it. Bruising in. Complain in behind. Next to Ham. Ham moving out. Archer in the slot. Shoots and scores. It's Hand and Archer again. Lovely pass from the Phoenix player coach. James Archer steaming into the net. Ryan got a piece of it. Couldn't keep it out. 24th of the season for James Archer. The champions tie it up. It's Phoenix 1, Telford 1. Joe Graham. will get there ahead of Salem. Clears the puck away. Michael Cerny in Phoenix. So lovely long pass into the zone. Comes handy. Delays. He plays it across. And that's a good save. Declan Ryan sliding across. Gets the blocker on. Your old car, seen better days, given up the ghost? You need the friendly guys at Davidson's. One phone call is all you need. They'll collect your car for free, sort out that nasty paperwork, and transform your old banger into lots of lovely cash. Because Davidson's are extremely reputable and recommended by the DVLA. So for the best prices, cash on the spot, and to scrap your car with confidence, call us on 0161 928 9981. Davidson's, we're talking scrap. Long pass glove down on the line by Rick Black. Kula has to try to walk in and Kula Vinen buries it. Very nice pass from Mika Kimiranta and Timo Kula Vinen snipes a one timer past the left pad of Stephen Foe into the back of the Phoenix net. It's Manchester 1, Telford 2. Now Bangle from Mackenzie Pope breaks loose out in front, well kicked away by Richard Bentham and it's Corson Heron who drives his way down the ice. Shoot save made by Ryan. And the tie over back towards Backlip, turns it over though. Miller brings it into the zone, tries to split the deep phone with a good poke check to knock the puck away. Kovar will drive down the ice, he's got support with him. Plays it across McKinney, good save, rebound was there, and the Tigers do well to clear it away. Kovar couldn't quite get the stick on it. Ryan. McKinney wins the draw, puts sent all the way around the board to McKinney. Will hustle across, nicely shields it away from Michael Pablo and plays it around for Robert Schnabel to step onto the Tigers. So we'll bring it away, two on one down the ice. Kulavine and delays, slides it across, it was in the skates of Kimi Ranta, and his shot hits the back of Edward, bounces up in the air. Kick coming in from Ben Pease from the line. Foe makes the save as Ben gets knocked out one time. A good save by Foe again off his shoulder. Blank trying to kick it through. Good save by Foe again. On Kimi Ranta to the feet to the back. And more strength than McKinney will play it ahead. It's Puka out of the box in behind Pablo. Taken down into the Telford goal. And Cerny forced outside the zone. They'll have to go back, back and off the board to Phoenix for a sleep though. Tigers bring it into the zone with Kimi Ranta, backhands across, comes off the skate of Nathan Salem, Archer sends it up the board's handle, look to skate onto it, the Tigers do get it away, but Archer with a nice pass to find Kovar, into the zone, he shoots off the block, and Ryan Spenton is crashing the net, and McKenzie into the zone, good diving play, Joe Graham to get the stick out there and stop Callum Bowley's pass getting through, Graham knocked off balance by Bowley, McKenzie to Davis behind the goal, nice pass, out to the line, big shot from Rose and he scores. Tip on it from Scott McKenzie, just got enough to redirect it past the left pad of Stephen Foe. It is a late goal in the second period for the Telford Tigers. It's Phoenix 1, Telford 3. So he will keep it in at the blue line. He's got the skate of Michael Cerny and Kibiranta gets it away. Neil with the backhander up off the boards. Cerny lets it run nicely, turns back into the zone, Yaroslav Kruzik tries to jump on his back, chips it to hand at the line, who finds Archer in the slot, nice pass Cerny in the corner, winds from the sharp angle and it lands on the back of the net, let's all calm down as the whistle goes.
CNI Solutions, keeping your computer network infrastructure beating. Because if it stops, so does your business. We provide many unique ways of keeping your network running at its full potential. Ensuring your company never misses a beat. CNI Solutions, keeping your computer network infrastructure beating. Long pass to Kovar, sweeps it across for Frankie Backlick. Backlick into the zone. Drives around the back of the net, trying to stuff it in. Ryan keeps the pad tight down on the post. And it's Marcus Maynard, they will bring it away for Telford. Kivy Rantz has it knocked loose by Backlick. Nice backhand pass. Richard Bentham, Backlick delays. Kovar back door, good save, Declan Ryan. Cerny finds hand again. Back to Michael Cerny. Cerny holding on to it, hand sharp angle, Archer shoots, good save, but it's got it. Declan Ryan got a piece of it, I thought it was a really good save, but the rebound was deflected in rather than away. It's the second goal of the game, 25th of the season for James Archer. Great start to the third period for the Manchester Phoenix. It's Phoenix 2, Telford 3. Oh, Stephen Foe, and they can be around to take the drop. It is the Tigers that win it. Play down towards the corner. Played across to Kulabinen. Kulabinen back to Pease. Kibi Ramson to Kulabinen. Played out the for the long time. Good stick in there though from Schnabel. The Phoenix can break down the ice short handed. Cerny in to the zone. Drives towards the net just wide of the far post. Kibi Ramson. Head towards Davis, Graham steps up on his man, Cruising flips it through, Boothroyd will hammer it off the boards. It's broken through, Phoenix will drive into the zone, it's played across Backlick, gets onto it, shoots the save by Ryan Archer on the rebound and scores! What a goal, James Archer! He knocked the puck through towards Backlick, who was denied by Declan Ryan, but James Archer was not to be denied. Send the hats flying. It's a hat trick for James Archer. Shot and a goal for the champions. It's Phoenix 3, Telford 3. Music fires around the boards. Schnabel as he bounces off the plexi. Cerny shovels it up ahead. Tony Hand in. Shot and he shoots and scores. Michael Cerny gets it away. Tony Hand breaks in. One on one. Block aside on Declan Ryan, 18th goal of the season for Tony Hunt. Two shorties in the same penalty. The champions lead Telford by four goals to three. And out for safety. Miller by Salem. He tried to play to himself off the board, and he actually did quite well. But the Phoenix have cleared it away. He needs to get onto the backlink, racing in. Tried to play it through his legs, and Declan Ryan. Gets the glove on top of him. He's going to wait. Kulabina for the Tigers. It's a plant. Bootboy puts him with the hip check. The Tigers have kept it in the zone. Plant down low goes back door and they score. Great work by Rick Plant along the boards. He slides it across and it's Mika Kiviranta who fires another one time a pass Stephen Foe to tie the game again. It's Phoenix 4, Telford 4. Past James Pease, who pins the man into the boards. Backlick comes steaming in. McKinney's picked it up. Backlick in tight on the back. Good save by Ryan. Pile up. Graham's there. Good save by Ryan again. And the whistle will go as Pavlou is all over Backlick. Gloves are dropped. Backlick and Pavlou. Joe Miller's in there trying to break it up. McKinney's in there as well. Now Boothroyd comes in to try and separate them. There was no need for Joe Miller to go in there. Once Bakalik could drop the gloves, Miller needed to stay out of the way. We'll see what the call's going to be here from the officials. Joe Miller will plead his innocence to Steve Brown. It's Hamlet that wins it, Schnabel across to Boothroyd. As Boothroyd chips it up ahead. Game 54 will go on a little bit longer as we will head into overtime. Here at CW Motors, we provide a large range of high quality services. Your vehicle will be looked after by our highly qualified and dedicated team using both state-of-the-art technology and good old-fashioned elbow grease. We specialise in accident crash repair, mechanical and bodywork and MOT preparation. We also have oven and jig facilities and can provide insurance estimates. 
So, for a friendly and professional service, come and see us at Victoria Mill, Droylston. Or you can call us on 0161 371993. Bouncing one for Robin Kovar, he gets it away to Graham and now back to Kovar. Kovar to Graham on the hash marks, Graham will carry away down the ice pass to Archer, he's intercepted by Pavlou and Mackenzie drives in, big shot, pad save, phone rebound was there, Telfer in the middle of the change. Pavlou across and it's fired in, phone blockers it away, Mackenzie will get onto it in the corner. Carries around the net, Kulaban in out near side, could save by foam, getting the pad down tight on the ice, and a little bit of room, and he'll slow things down and fires a long pass that's been deflected, Michael Cerny, he's in behind, he shoots, he scores! The league champions finish it in style as Hand releases Cerny, he goes high, block aside on Declan Ryan, the EPL champions pick up two points to end the season. Final score after overtime at the Ice Dome, Manchester Phoenix 5, Telford Tigers 4. Here we are, I'm with uh, James Archer, man of the match, hat-trick hero tonight, where Phoenix came back from 3-1 down to win 5-4 in overtime against the Telford Tigers. James, last regular game of the season, we've won the league by a bit of a margin out, but we didn't have to rely on the head head, it's good, isn't it? Yeah, no, I mean, we, we won it last weekend, which, which was good, but I mean, you know, that we came back from behind today. Obviously, you know, we wanted to win and lift the cup, being happy, I mean, if, you, if we'd have lost, it, it's not the same feeling. Oh, no, you don't want me spoiling your party on this one. No, 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 we don't. So, I mean, moving on, I mean, tonight was a tough game. It was, uh, you know, it was uh, good open hockey, which we expected tonight with, for, to be honest, not a great deal at stake for either team. No, I mean, both teams had qualified, obviously, you know, I mean, you might say it were a nothing game, but you still want to play well. You want to take four man into the playoffs. So, you know, luckily we came away with a win tonight. You know, we had a bit of fun hoisting the cup with a big smile on his face. You know, we're going to, come back in training this week and we're going to get ready for uh, Bracknell next weekend. And left Richard to go swimming on his own, whose idea was that? No, it was Jacob. What, Jacob's? Is it Jacob? Oh, of course it was Jacob. Yeah. yeah. I've, got to go, I've got to go to spec after oh, this. So, right, on to Saturday and Sunday, Bracknell Bees. They're a tough physical side, it'll be difficult down in the air barn, but we've got to be confident. Yeah, obviously, I mean, you know, I, mean, we, I think we had them last year in playoffs as well and, you know, I, the runners close at their barn last year in playoffs and you know I expect them to do the same this year but you know but hopefully same again will you know over the two legs come out on top and uh, hopefully seal the place at Coventry yeah keep it tight down there keep 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 it all to play up here and in front of this slot we can do anything yep that's it I mean the crowd make a massive difference so whatever the scoreline is you know the noise in here and the atmosphere will make all the difference all right go and enjoy yourself mate and uh, I'll see you next weekend yep cheers all right, here we are with our post-game wrap-up. Uh, a little bit different tonight. Uh, we've let the players go and have a beer and enjoy themselves because we've got a shiny wee trophy there to look at. I'm here with Neil and Anna. A shiny wee trophy. Isn't it beautiful? Aye. It's better than I expected it to be, I'll give you that. But to be honest, you don't want to miss Phoenix TV this week. As long as the camera's got the battery in there, we'll have a good show. Neil, what an emotional night. Well, I'm, I haven't got much left, to be honest. I'm... I, need, <laughs> I just need to go and lie down in a dark room somewhere. But yeah, you know, great. I mean, what a great squad. I mean, to me, you know, tonight, let's be honest, 
whether I should say this or not, Jim, tonight wasn't a game that we really needed to win and tonight wasn't a game Telford needed to win. Um, but, um, you know, Manchester come back again, they're losing again and, and they just keep battling and they come back and in the end they win the game, you know. And I, I think that's credit to the squad, really. I don't, I don't think it's just winning the league. I think it's credit to the squad. That's how we've played all year and we keep talking about it. that's the character of the team. I think one thing that really stood out tonight, though, was their interaction with the fans and everybody around tonight. It went on far longer than it should have, but they just didn't want to disappoint anybody. To be fair, me and the boys are pretty good at boring people. It's something we're, we specialise in. I mean, I, you know, I started it and I taught them well, don't you think? Oh, well, you're the expert. <laughs> Anna? No, just, um, I mean, being up in there in the stands, I was running from down to the bottom to up the top just to try and uh, appreciate it in its, in its full form. Proud is the only word that I can think of. Seven months hard work for you and the lads. Um, I trust you're feeling very similar. Yeah, it's been a really difficult season, uh, but it's been a good season. We, we've, we've had a better plan this year. Uh, I think we've had more people involved in the organisation, which has took a little bit of the strain out of it, to be honest. Um, and I think, you know, we, we've brought in fitness trainers this year and, and some strength and, and some core stability people, which have helped the guys. And I think, you know, you've seen that when we've played 16 plays 22. You know, we're still playing in the third and we're still scoring in, in overtime. So uh, I think it's paid off for us this year. You know, I just, just really want to say... Uh, Credit to the backroom staff because we have the best backroom staff in the league by, by a quarter mile, honestly. We have, we have two doctors and we have a doctor with us uh, that's been with us for, for, for must be 10 years now, Ken Vickers, uh, who just works tireless in the background, who never ever gets a mention. Um, we have physios, we have trainers, we have strength and fitness people, nutritionists. You know, they all work so hard behind the scenes and, you know, the training's intense with the guys, but, it, but it's paid off and, you know, you saw tonight, I don't know how many volunteers came out on the ice, but, the, you know, Phoenix has 46 volunteers and I'm really proud of every one of them. You know, they do a fantastic job for us and, and they produce a great match night. So, yeah, well done to everybody, not just the team. Well, let's see, moving on now to next week, uh, it's Bracknell. Now, if you look at it on paper, we're first, they're eighth. We should, it should be easy. That just does not happen in the playoffs. No, it, doesn't, it doesn't happen in the playoffs. And, and, and we've seen this year, haven't we? Uh, any team can beat any team on any night. And you said to me a few weeks ago, you thought Bracknell had a good squad and had underplayed all season. So, you know, you tell me, Jim, you know, your, your, your dark favourites, I believe, are Swindon and Bracknell. Is that right? No. Oh, no? no. Uh, Swindon, I think, are going to be hard to beat, definitely. Bracknell will give us a tough game. I think we'll come out on top. I think we've got... See, it's hard to say. Our quality of imports is the best in the league by a long, long way. Backed up with some of the best Brits you could possibly hope for, which is why we've won it and why I think we can do can defend the playoffs. OK, well, uh, we believe in the camp that Swindon is the dark horse and we believe that they're going to be there somewhere about at the end of all this and, and be a surprise to everybody. Um, they've got some good quality in the camp and, they, and they've got uh, a lot of breadth. You know, it's a big team, that. Um, and we'll see, you know, I mean, we're up for the playoffs. We think we stand a good chance. We, we think, you know, we think Bratton are going to give us a hard game, to be honest with you. We don't think they're going to be easy to move past. Uh, and we think we're going to be fairly switched on for the game. And I think we're going to have to play hard. A couple of the arms are quite close to call. I think Milton yeah. Keynes, I think it's Milton Keynes Swindon. That is, I don't know, it's going to be so difficult to call that. At Nick Poole, he, he produces a playoff team every single year and they are going to be tough. Great for them not having their home all season and still battling to fourth place. Unbelievable. And don't, don't you think they've done such a great job? Such well, a great job. i our number so many times. You know, I, I definitely think we'll see them there. And the Guildford-Telford game as well. I do not want to be the person that has to call that game. That could go either way, I think. Exactly. So, I mean, there's going to be four disappointed teams not at Coventry. I just hope we're not one of them. What do you think about the Basingstoke game? How do you think that's going to go? Basingstoke are struggling with injuries at the moment. They lost Muzzy Wales. Yeah. He broke his ankle yeah, last night. So hope you get better soon, Muzzy. You know, I wouldn't wish it on me worst enemy. It's just horrible, horrible injury for somebody to get, to get at, at this stage of the season when they're looking to enjoy it. What do you think about the other team playing them? In all honesty, Basingstoke should have too much for them. If Sheffield concentrate on the hockey, they've got some good hockey players. And But Basingstoke, they're so tough on their own ice. Mm. I think they, they, they'll probably do it uh, on the, in the return leg. But the game at Sheffield could go either way. Mm. Yeah, a bit agree. like Swindon Basingstoke, I think, that when it really matters, they can really pull it out of the bag and they can surprise you. I mean, obviously, not surprised with too much. They've been in the top of the table uh, pretty much the whole way through the season. But like we said, Swindon, Milton Keynes, when it really matters, they don't have to dig deep and they'll come at you from all angles, certainly. Just... Um, Give me your top four that you think is a bit of common. Should go and put your neck on the block. Well, Phoenix are going to win, obviously. 
Um, I think second will be Milton Keynes, and then Basingstoke, and then I'm going to go with Telford. Go on, Jungen. What you got? I think the final four will be Phoenix, mm -hmm. Basingstoke, yeah. Milton Keynes, and who's the other one? Forgotten Either Guildford or Telford, I said Telford. Uh, Guildford. I think Guildford are another. I, I don't think there'll be any surprises at Coventry. I just don't. Well, you know what's quite interesting? Uh, Telford have got quite a good media machine, as you know, and, and they've been doing a lot of interviews during the week, and they're tipping themselves... Uh, for the team that's going to win the playoffs. It's been going on all week and the, the tails seem up for it. And, you know, let's be honest, tonight you can't really put too much of a judgment call on because we weren't playing hard out, they weren't playing hard out. So, you know, tonight you've just got to put down to a game of hockey. But uh, it'd be interesting. It'll be very interesting. I'll, I'll tell you something. Um, I mean, I'd be quite happy with just winning the league, to be honest with you. I, th I think we've had a great season. I wouldn't. No, I would. I'd be, you know, I'd be happy with winning the league. And I know Tony and the guys would. If we win anything else from this point onwards, it's just icing on the cake for us. Um, I think we're good enough to do it. I just think it's very difficult, you know, over two... Well, you've got, you've got two games before, haven't you? And then you've got two games at the weekend. So, you know, this is a four-game weekend. It's, it's a very, very difficult thing to win, you know what I mean? And you, you're either on, switched on, or you're switched off. So we're just going to have to see where we are and just make sure we've got enough left in the tank. It's small squad, a lot of character. I'm hoping we can do it, you know, but it'll, uh, it, 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 to, to do it... I think it's going to be hard, and I think if we do that, that will just be out of this world. It will, but surely, I mean, obviously, credit to the lads tonight. And last night, it was a weekend that we didn't need to win. Mm. We've come out, mm. we've got four points from it when we yep. didn't need to. Um, they're going into it with, with, you know, with their heads focused. Yeah, and yeah. the only thing that concerns me about Telford, it's their first playoffs for a very, very long mm. time. And I just said it down there on the podcast, playoff hockey is different to league hockey. And are they going to be prepared for that? I'm not sure. Well, Tom Watkins is, a, is an experienced man. He's been around the block a long, long time. He will have them prepared, there's no doubt about it. I've just got a feeling, I'm going to stick my neck in out, I think it will be a Manchester-Milton Keynes final. Wow. I'd like to see that. Well, I'd, I'd, I'd love to see that, you know, at the end of the day. And, and just so everybody knows, you know, Manchester's taking 546 fans to the final, registered through the club. I don't even know if any have bought outside of that. But 546 fans to the what final hell of a party! That's for 25 percent of the capacity <laughs> of the rink. They're going to hear us, right? Moving on. Don't forget, we've got our game on Sunday. Playoff quarterfinal second leg. Big game. 5:30 face-off. Big game. The team have said, and I've said it all along, they need you lot there, loud and proud. Come along, cheer us on to Coventry. 